So far today, we've talked about establishing trust, let the other person know you have their best interests in mind, picking a time when they're emotionally ready to receive feedback, begin by listening to the other person's side of the story, uh, praising more than you criticize. And the next thing we'll talk about is giving smart feedback. When you give people uh, feedback, you need to give it with the same level of specificity and measurability and all those other things we talked about in regard to SMART goals. You need to do that with feedback as well. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because uh, we, spent a lot, we spent a whole lecture talking about SMART goals. Uh, but let me just give you an example of what I mean. This is very vague feedback. You left lab equipment out. That's very vague. SMART feedback would look like this. After lab on Tuesday, you left three volumetric pipettes out on the counter in the wet lab, and I wasted 15 minutes looking for them at 8 a.m. on Wednesday. So you can see, just like SMART goals, our feedback here um, is very specific about what happened, when, who, why it's a problem. Um, we don't have a deadline per se, but we talk about the time of when this happened. This is quantifiable, uh, three volumetrics, 15 minutes. Um, and it, it focuses on what was the consequence? Why is this a problem? So this is what I mean by smart feedback. I do want to talk a little bit about what I mean by relevant feedback because that is very important. Um, first of all, feedback needs to be relevant to job performance. I have a colleague who uh, is responsible for finding clients for uh, one of my leadership courses. We do group projects and she's responsible uh, for finding clients. And she writes all of her emails in bright blue comic sans, which drives me nuts. I find it very unprofessional. Um, and I want, you know, I, I like want to tell her like, no, you need, you know, for my class, you need to use like black regular font. Um, however, she does a great job finding clients and uh, the clients always speak really well of her. She is very good at her job. And so what business is it of mine? What font she uses in her in her emails, right? Now, if she were struggling to find clients and I thought it was because she was being unprofessional, then maybe that's a discussion we could have. But if someone is doing their job well, then let them do it. Uh, Robert Frost said, you can tell a man what to do, but don't tell him how to do it. If someone is performing well, let them do it uh, the way that they want to. Give them the freedom, the autonomy to do it the way they want, as long as they are being successful. Make sure that your feedback is relevant to job performance. Uh, by relevant, I also mean that, be, uh, that feedback should focus on behavior, not character. There is a big difference between telling someone, hey, you're really messy, and telling someone, hey, your desk is very disorganized. One of those, the hey, you're very messy, that's attacking someone's character. And any time that you attack someone's character, they're going to defend themselves because they feel like they're defending who they are. So, of course, they're going to defend themselves. When you criticize behavior, um, then that's something that's a little bit easier to change. We don't identify as much with our behavior. We don't consider our behavior ourselves the way we, we think of character as ourselves. So when you critique people's behavior, they feel like they can change it. When you critique people's character, they feel like they have to be defensive. Lastly, make sure that the feedback is relevant to what the person is trying to achieve. So using another kickboxing example, I train with a lot of different partners and invariably <clears throat> they give me feedback that, oh, hey, you're doing this wrong with your punches or you need to work on this with your kicks. And they're absolutely right. They are 100% accurate about all the things they critique me about. However, it's really difficult to learn a new skill and get good at it. And I am doing lots and lots and lots of things wrong, uh, both with punches and kicks. And each day I can really only focus on one or two things to improve on. And so they might give me feedback on something that I'm not working on that day. And so yes, they're right. And yes, it's accurate feedback, but it's not very helpful because I only have enough bandwidth to deal with one thing at a time. And that's outside of where my focus is. So make sure that when you give people feedback, it's relevant to what they care about, their performance expectations. So far, we've talked about establishing trust so the person knows that you have their best interests in mind, picking a time when they are emotionally open to receiving feedback, beginning by listening to their side of the story, praising more than we criticize, giving smart feedback, and then the last step is to agree on smart goals. Uh, it is very cruel to tell someone what they are doing wrong and then not tell them how to improve it. 
Uh, when we agree on SMART goals, we give people a path forward to be successful. It's not, hey, these are your shortcomings and this is what you're bad at and all right, that's it. Um, it's this is an area for growth and this is how you can achieve that growth. Let's set a goal for performance improvement. Let's create a path forward so you actually improve. Let's not give the critical feedback and then just end there. Uh, and of course, we use the SMART goal uh, structure in order to do that. Uh, I've talked a lot about giving critical feedback today uh, because I think people struggle more with giving critical feedback than giving positive feedback, but uh, I've emphasized giving praise and uh, in regard to SMART goals too, when you set SMART goals for performance improvement, focus on building strengths as well as addressing weaknesses. Um, make people feel as if they, they get to flaunt their strengths with their goals, not just address their weaknesses. So. Um, whenever you're making SMART goals for people, make sure you have uh, goals that focus on building their strengths as well as addressing their weaknesses. Today we talked about giving effective feedback and I gave you uh, six characteristics of effective feedback, which are uh, to establish trust that you have the other person's best interest in mind, pick an appropriate time to give them feedback where they're emotionally capable of receiving it, begin by listening to their side of the story, be sure to praise more often than you criticize, Give smart feedback so they understand exactly uh, what what which behavior is the problem. And then agree on smart goals so you give them a path forward to success. And that's how you give effective feedback.